Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Susan Brown at the Center for Better Bones. It's my pleasure to be with you this afternoon. I'm going to talk about a few things. I'm going to tell you some new projects we're doing here at the Center for Better Bones. I'm going to tell you some news you can use, some new elements, some new research that's really kind of fun and relates to how you can build stronger bones. And third, I'm going to answer some of your questions that we've been receiving over the past week or so. So number one, the first thing I want to remind you all about is that we're going to have our second retreat. This retreat's gonna be in Sedona. For those of you that don't know, Sedona is a magical place with these energy vortices where the energy of the earth is very abundant and very powerful. We're going to a lovely retreat center in the mountains. It's going to be November 1st to the 4th. So if for any chance you want to develop your own personalized Better Bones, Better Body program, you want to do it with me working with you, with all my staff, it's going to be a small group of women. It'll be a lovely experience. We still have a few more slots, so if you're interested in joining us in Sedona for your Power Bone Health program, give us a call. We'd be happy to put you in the group. That's number one. Number two is that every day I come across all this fascinating new research, and I'm thinking, how can I get this research to the Better Bones community? Certainly these little Facebook Lives help, and today I'm going to give you a few tips and then I'm going to explain to you my latest plan of how I can spread this information even more quickly. The first thing I want to draw our attention to is that everything is energy. Everything, whether it's our physical body, the chair, the camera, it's all vibrating atoms. It's all energy. And the type of energy that we as humans give off is often called a biofield, a bioenergetic field. And we actually there are those individuals amongst us who can harness that energy, focus that energy, like Tai Chi masters or Qi Kung masters, or some of these ancient masters, yogis for sure. And now we're seeing a new field of research where they're trying to use this biofield energy in a novel way. This is some research on vitamin D and conscious energy healing treatment. Now this was a really interesting study, just released this year, pointing out the fact that energy medicine is now being recognized by mainstream medicine as an accepted alternative therapy. In this case, what the researchers did was they took some vitamin D supplements and they had a person who was a master healer in the United States spend five minutes gathering energy and sending it to this vitamin D, but the vitamin D was in India. So he sent this energy to India by his energetic programming and he potentiated that vitamin D while at the same time there was a person who wasn't a healer a sham doing the same sort of thing imagining he was sending energy to another group of vitamin D and when they gave the vitamin D to these cells it wasn't a human study but it was a cell study they found that the cells exposed to the vitamin D that were energized or you'd say potentiated they were much more effective they found that the alkaline phosphatase more than doubled, and this is, can be a marker of bone formation. They found that the collagen synthesis in these cells doubled or more in the energy when they were exposed to energized vitamin D as, exposed, as opposed to the cells that had regular old vitamin D or had, sent an energy that wasn't effective. And they found that there was an increase in the cell's capacity to mineralize. So three very, three very important parameters relating to bone were affected by using a vitamin D that had been potentiated from a healer. To me, this is fascinating. To me, we're going to see, lot, we all kind of sense there's an energy field around us. Some people have imagined it looks like that illustration I show you. And there are those people who can gather that energy, send it off for the use of good. I think we'll be finding more research on human consciousness how our states of awareness, how our ability to transmit our own energy fields, our own information fields can affect the wider university. And certainly they've seen this in meditation. If a number of people meditate, there can even be changes in a community far away as far as the crime and the well-being of that community. So we look for consciousness studies, energy studies, really fascinating things to come. The other thing that I thought would be really important is to call attention that in the Better Bones, Better Body program, everything we do for bones should be good for the entire body. We don't want to take a drug or a medicine or even 
a natural factor that may help bone but damage the rest of the body. One of the interesting parts of our program is that we look at all the key nutrients, and one of those nutrients is silicon. We tend to use stabilized silicon in drops that some of you, if you follow my work, you're probably taking them. Um, but this researchers found a new use for silicon, and actually this same silicon that you get in the bone building products we use and in the drops we use is also very effective at removing aluminum. Now, you might not have been informed, but heavy metal toxicity is a really big problem for bone, whether it's aluminum, mercury, lead. Aluminum is particularly difficult to remove from the body, and we're exposed to a lot of it now. It's very interesting, the new exposure to aluminum, which has to do with uh, atmospheric conditions and the control of asthma, 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 asthma conditions to do with the sky and the clouds and actually the seeding of clouds with heavy metals. I'm not going to get into that right now. It's a curious topic, but we do seem to be exposed to more aluminum. And the important thing to remember is that silicon, the same silica we use for bone, those same little drops that I give the people, that will help to remove heavy metals. So everything we do for bone is good for the entire body. And this is a really interesting case of that. The, the Center for Better Bones has always had a Twitter account, and now I've decided that when every day when I look at the research and I find things that are interesting, I'm going to announce it on Twitter. And so I'm suggesting that if you're interested in hearing the updates on bone health and some of the other fascinating science research pieces I come across, just subscribe to be a member of the Twitter feed from Center for Better Bones. That's our Twitter, and we'd be happy to keep you informed about the latest research on bone health and the fascinating general research that's coming out today. Hundreds of studies a day, actually, but I'll only tell you of the one or two best ones. So the questions. We receive lots of questions here at the Center for Better Bones, and every once in a while, I try to catch up with a few of them. Here are a few of the questions we have received recently. This question is about a person who says they're losing calcium in the urine and they want to know what they can do to help their bones or to protect their bones. So we know that their physician must have done a test of asking them to collect urine for 24 hours, they send you home with a big jug, and then they study how much calcium is in that urine. If you're losing more than 250 or 300 milligrams, then you're losing too much calcium and it's probably coming from bone. And so this person that's been documented, she's losing calcium, she wants to know how she can help herself. Well, the first thing you want to do is develop an alkaline diet because it is known that many times we lose calcium in the urine because of an acidity of the urine and a general acid condition with the human body. So I'm going to say be sure to get our pH test kit. Be sure to alkalize. We've written extensively on pH balance on the Better Bones website and also on the Alkaline for Life website. So alkalize is the first thing. Also, your doctor has probably told you it's good to reduce coffee, to reduce salt, and even stress causes a loss of calcium in the urine. So be mindful of the need to kind of find uh, ways to deal with stress. Certain nutrients like vitamin K, we always use vitamin K2 in our bone program. That helps to reduce the loss of calcium in the urine. And as this client probably knows, the doctors often recommend a drug, a thiazide diuretic, which is a blood pressure medication, which sort of incidentally helps the correct loss of calcium in the urine. But we always first try with alkalizing. And in fact, in the naturopathic world, if you go to a naturopathic doctor, they might try using potassium citrate. But you want to do that with the doctor's supervision, and it often works very well. Important to correct the loss of calcium in the urine because, one, it's coming from bone, it'll drain bone over time. But number two, if you have all that calcium in your kidney, it tends to lead to kidney stones. So be sure to drink plenty of water, stay well hydrated while you're dealing with this issue. So this is interesting. This, this woman got tossed from a boat, boat just recently and suffered two compression fractures. She wants to know what she can do to recover from this. Well, of course, you're going to have to rest up a little bit as you recover from these fractures.
But I'm happy to say that we have seen many, many people speed their fracture healing following our guidelines. And I have written a very comprehensive article on how to speed fracture healing. And you can certainly get that free on our website. And we also have a kit of particular nutrients and educational materials that can help you speed fracture healing. For example, you want to have a high protein diet. You really need high calories because you need many calories to repair the body, to have that energy. You want to use high antioxidant foods because there's a lot of oxidative damage going on. And you want to have as much circulation as you can comfortably, perhaps with gentle massage and movement, but you don't want to disrupt those bones that are healing. I hope you heal quick and I hope you run right to your computer and get our How to Speed Fracture Healing booklet. It will help you a lot. The next question is what are my thoughts on hormone therapy for menopause? Well, those of you that have read my book, Better Bones, Better Body, which was written probably almost 15, 20 years ago, will know that I looked carefully at the data and I decided then that generally hormone therapy was too dangerous to use for the small benefits you would get on bone. Then, at that time, many people, many of the medical societies might not agree with me. They were commonly giving estrogen therapy and hormone therapy for bone. Um, and as much as 2008, the medical associations were suggesting, oh, it's fine to use estrogen for osteoporosis therapy. Now we see a recent report from the American College of Physicians. They say, wow, we recommend estrogen therapy in 2008. We no longer recommend it because over time we've seen that the benefits of fracture reduction are really way outweighed by the risk, which include heart disease, stroke, uh, clots, several different issues that sh had more risks than benefits. So everybody can make their own decision um, if they want to use hormone therapy or not. But here at the Center for Better Bones, it's uh, not one of the modalities that we endorse very much except in special situations. And that's the kind of situations you talk about with your doctor. The next question is what do I think about OsteoStrong? Uh, these osteostrong machines, which are also called biodensity machines. Some of you may have seen them. They're great big machines where you get fitted and you push as hard as you can with your upper body for just a few seconds, one time, and then you push as hard as you can with your lower body. Maybe they do it two times, uh, but just very few times. And, that, and then there's a, no, one other exercise where you pull down the strong weight and the gist of this machine is it's trying to give really heavy loads to the bone. What we know is that every time I walk, I present the load. One, maybe if I stand, I have one force of gravity. If I jump, I may have two or three force. The bigger load you have on the bone, the more you stimulate bone growth. This machine stimulates bone growth. Some of the research does show that the 10%, I have not seen clients get that high, but I have seen studies showing a 2, 3, 4%. Um, it certainly varies by person to person. You only have to go once a week, but you have to go all the time. And the minute you stop the exercising, the minute you stop going, you're going to lose the bone again. So we, we think it's fine. We might start researching with one of those machines here, but we think also to get a program you can do yourself to increase load. A weightlifting program is very helpful. Just just to give you a teaser, one of my clients has been working with me a year and a half. She got very motivated about working with trainers and lifting heavy weights, and she actually just gained 20% uh, in the neck of her hip, which is really unheard of. Even her doctor called me and said, how did you do this? She also gained in the total hip 10% and 6% in the spine. So we're going to be talking a lot, a lot about loading. This is a machine that loads. If you do it, if you do it for the year, be sure to let me know how your bone densities change. I think it's a fine idea. The, um, this is an interesting question, uh, kind of a little more difficult question. This is a person who um, hurt their back 15 years ago, and, um, and she recently had a disc out of place uh, about eight years ago. She sent for x-rays in the bone density, and she sees that she has a loss of height in the vertebral body. Her question is, could the trauma have caused this bone loss? 
and she's concerned that the doctor wants her to go on medications. Well, this is kind of a complicated question because many years passed, certainly trauma can cause because one, you don't do exercise. You're very pain. You have a lot of pain. You can't do the exercise. Plus, there's damage. Can be damage to tissue itself. I think in this case that it's a very good idea to consider the big picture. In fact, we at the Center for Better Bones always suggest you look at the whole big picture and see what's going on. Is there any other reason for this bone loss? Certainly, when clients are confronted with the question of whether they should use drug or not, drugs for bone, we all look to see what really is happening with the bone density, what the changes have been over time, and if there's any secondary causes for this loss. So I would say sure the trauma could have affected, but I would have a very careful workup of my case if this were me before I decided about bone drugs to see what's actually happening and what are the causes of bone loss. So I think that's all the questions that we had today. Uh, it's always a pleasure to try to answer your questions. Feel free to send them in, send them in Facebook, watch us on Facebook. Uh, certainly catch up with our blogs if you haven't subscribed and be sure to sign up for twi the Twitter at Center for Better Bones because we'll be actually trying to keep you informed about all this amazing new research that's going on. In the meantime, I wish you well. Hope you have a great